I'll be firing a maximum of 60 shots onto this driver at full speed. And let's simply see what's happening to the face. Boys and girls, today again is a little bit different. Today I want to talk drivers. I mean, I don't want to make this a commercial like, hey, Callaway is the best club in the world. It is, especially for long drive. But I want to talk drivers of the new generation and the old generation because what actually happened in 2008 is there was a new rule implemented to drivers and that's about core. So what is core? I'm talking this driver, which is a Callaway Epic Speed long drive, and also, what I want to do today is talk this driver. Which is a tailor-made R580XD. I was hitting this in like 2004, I believe. And then in 2008, a new core rule for equipment for drivers was implemented globally. So for the RNA and for the USJ. I believe the USJ implemented that rule a little bit earlier, but in 2008, every single one in this world, every single golfer for tournament, tournament golf was supposed to hit a driver that is core conforming. What does that mean? So imagine you would have a golf ball and you throw that one against the wall. Boom. With 100 miles an hour, it is only allowed to bounce back with 83%. So 83 miles an hour. So how is this actually done? These club faces are allowed a core of 0.83. So how is that actually tested? So what they do is they put it in a lab and actually fire a golf ball with a cannon, with a ball cannon on the face. And it's only allowed to bounce back at 83%. So can you actually bring this lab kind of ball cannon shooter or whatnot to every single one of the tournaments to actually test the hits? No, you cannot. That's why CT was implemented. CT means characteristic time. Core means coefficient of restitution. What does that mean? Characteristic time is the time a pendulum test. So these CT machines, I don't know if you've seen one like these before, but what they do actually is they have a pendulum that's lift it up to a certain distance that is standardized and then it's boom being actually thrown at the club face and it's only allowed to rest on the club face for 239 microseconds with a tolerance of 18 that makes makes it 257 microseconds so that's why they actually try to simulate the trampoline effect of the club face so what does that mean for golf and for equipment in general. No driver, not a single one of the new driver's generations are allowed to be hotter or have more trampoline effect or be faster than the generation before, since 2008. The new, well, feature. Why are the new drivers actually better than the generation before? The only reason for that is forgiveness. So they are better for hits off the center of the face, miss hits, and are also faster for miss hits and hits that are not in the middle of the face. So they're actually making the hot zone, let's, let's say the hot zone of the driver bigger and miss hits not as bad as they've been before. So new generation drivers are actually not about maximum speed, but more about average speed and less dispersion on miss hits. That's what it's about. None of those drivers out there are hotter than before because it's simply not conforming. But what we want to do today is take this driver, which is over CT because it's from 2004 and was, well, sold before the new rule was actually implemented. So what I want to do is these drivers, these drivers' faces and how they've done that is usually the faces are a little bit thinner, have more trampoline effect, and therefore also less durable. So let's see how long it takes for me to crush this face or maybe I, I won't crush it. I, I don't know. I don't actually know what's going to happen. So what I'll be doing is I'll be firing, let's say, a maximum of 60 shots onto this driver at full speed with the hardest ball out there, a 118 compression ball 
Those are the all competition balls we've been hitting in 2019. And let's simply see what's happening to the face. And also, I'll be putting a dot up here on the face. I like measuring the club speed at this point of the club. So high center, there we go. And see what it does to the efficiency on the quad. So usually the highest efficiencies were smash factors. I like to call it strike factor because it simply shows how well you strike the ball. The highest I've ever seen on this machine is a 1.45 with like the craziest ball and the craziest driver. So let's see if we can exceed that with a high core driver and how long it's gonna last. Let's get right into it. Don't really know what to expect, but one thing is certain, nine and a half degrees, <laughs> definitely not my loft. So I expect super high spin rates, but I don't mind right now. Well, how many hits is it gonna be? I don't know, everything's different in this video. Just like today, my videographer is very different. Look at this guy. How do you like the stash, huh? How about that stash? I had a, <laughs> like stash. I had a really hard night out yesterday, so. Go, 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 go. I would say pass me the camera and we go. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> like that. Oh, it feels, it feels a bit weird because obviously also, the shaft is like, that's a stock shaft from like 2004, right? It's, it's, it's really, it's really bad actually. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's really, really bad, but whatever. Let's put the right settings up here and then let's keep going. Let's just crush it. Let's see, is it gonna be one hit? Is it, is, is it not gonna break at all? I don't know. Let's see, never tried this. Actually, I would expect when I hit, I would expect spin rates over 4,000 with a spin. So let's see, I got some of these AMTs here. They're so old, so, well, it doesn't matter at all if I hit them over and over again or not, because they don't convert that well anyways anymore, but they're still hard, harder than any. The face, everything sits so weird. It's so off, everything about this, but whatever. I don't know if XD right here actually stands for extra distance or extra draw. <laughs> Maybe it's extra draw, I don't know. Comment below what you feel like, or if you know this driver actually. I know that I've talked to Hogan and I was asking like, hey Hogan, I I'm, I'm gonna crush this R580. And he was like, what, what the hell is the R580? He had no idea, he's too young. So do you guys actually remember this driver? Comment down below as well. Okay, first shot, let's see. Let's see what's gonna happen. Didn't break yet, we keep going. So the rough length of the driver, is like 45 and a half. Well, it's not a long drive club. A bit better, <laughs> oh my God, it spun 6,000, Jesus. As you can tell, this is not what these drivers were made for. You can definitely tell that. What I would expect actually also is a bit of flattening. So the, the club phase usually flattens first and then it breaks. Let's see if, if that's gonna become reality. Getting faster, 203. Yeah. Slowly but surely, it's flattening. Fast ball so far, 206. Getting there. We're getting there. Take it from me, must be out your mind. Woo! There's a 210, 209. I'm getting there. It was not the hit, it flattened. It's super flat. It did not break yet, but the shaft broke. I mean, this, this shaft is probably like 20 years old, so that's probably the reason it broke. But 
I got a solution for this. We just put a new shaft in. So I don't have a spare shaft without a Callaway adapter. So what we do is we take an old shaft, get rid of the adapter, and try that one. Here we are. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Just like in the casino. Mix it, mix it, mix it. I love this food. So, before you ask, it's a 3M DP810. So it dries. In the meanwhile, while it's drying, let's do a QA. and a Q and a All right, first question. I'm a four inch T guy, which is good already. <laughs> I'm around plus five and plus nine on my driver AOA, which is good too, um, which is great for hitting it longer, yes. But I fade away on my back foot, on my swing, so I know I'm losing distance. Maybe, not necessarily, maybe. What drills can I do to improve without lowering my AOA? Very interesting because when you like start right and shift right and stay right, you could potentially sacrifice some distance or power. What you can do is with a speed stick, for example, you can do something like this. You can do a drill like swing up, stop at like three quarters of your backswing, shift left, and then like boom, explode to the right from there. So like actually utilize the left side and then leave foot to boom, move to the right. Not only good for this, also good for a lot of other stuff. Nice drill. Next one. Hey Martin, great stuff. I'm currently battling too much dynamic loft and spin. Yeah. How would you recommend practicing to get better launch spin and dynamic loft? Yeah, dynamic loft is actually what's causing spin together with AOA. But what you can do to lower dynamic loft is you grab your driver and you take an impact back. This is not an impact back, this is a back. But well, it's, it's more or less the same. What you can do is when you hit, you try to stop at impact, boom, right there, and give it zero loft. Feel like you give your club zero loft at impact, right there. Use a proper impact back, don't hit your back, okay? But go like, boom, so you keep your hands forward like naturally and video that and try to replicate that when you swing a golf club. Wouldn't it make sense for the sweet spot of drivers to be on the toe for long drive to lengthen the club without actually lengthening the club. So what you're saying is, because you create more speed up here, you wanna move the sweet spot over there. Well, that's not how physics work, right? The middle middle will always remain the sweet spot, probably. But it's actually, so the idea of it is actually not too bad because what it's about is making the club more forgiving. So that's what actually club manufacturing is about and technology is about nowadays. So making hits right here, right there, and right there, number one, faster, number two, better launching and better spinning, and number three, there's your German three, less dispersion. So you wanna create these three factors for off-center hits. That's the future of club manufacturing. So, well, it would make sense, but not necessarily about the sweet spot. Sweet spot is such a weird term, it's about how how soft a hit feels and that will always probably remain the center because of the physics and how the club torques and all that stuff. I like this one. What's the farthest ball you've ever hit? Doesn't matter if it's downwind or anything. In practice, I actually don't know. On my simulator, well, I could like crank it up to 600 yards when you like raise the altitude or in, in set, set it to downwind or whatever. But I never do that because it doesn't make sense. But in competition, I was playing the Rockwell Blast in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is fairly high altitude. And I hit this ball over here. 231, 13.2 lounge, and about 1800 spin. That ended up at 439 that day. And that was by far the biggest number during those times. So that was definitely one of the best balls I've ever hit. And also, well, the reaction cost 
a little bit of different comments on social media, but I like that one. <laughs> For your average golfer who typically drives the ball between 230 and 280-ish, what's the best way to gain speed to consistently break 300 yards? So first and foremost, 280 is already a pretty good number, but the two main factors for your average amateur is number one, mechanics, and what kind of power sources in your golf swing you're lacking. Then how is your delivery when you hack the shit out of the golf ball and you slice every single one, you should improve that first. And then make speed gains by following over speed training, go to the gym and hit with maximum intent at the driving range because you need these sessions to actually amp up your speed reserve and also be faster on course. That's what speed training is actually about. It's not about hitting that max ball out there. It's about building up the speed reserve and be faster without even feeling it. Kind of a long question there. I won't read all of it, but it's basically about the comparison of the GC Quad and the Trackman at outdoor conditions. So these devices are different devices and for different purposes. So the GC Quad is for launch data at impact the radar device trackman is more about what's happening downrange and also at impact. So, well, it's different devices for different purposes in my opinion, but it's such a nerdy topic. I wanna know if you guys actually wanna know more about it and actually nerd out for a couple of videos. Leave me a comment down below if that's actually something you're interested in because it takes a lot of effort on my side to make these things happen and I wanna know if it's worth it. So comment down below. Yes, I wanna see the quad and trackman comparison or something like that, be creative. Seems pretty good, let's see how it does. <laughs> All right, back to work. <laughs> actually warm up again. I don't know how long this one's gonna last. It's gonna be the shaft again, or the face, the ball, me. Let's see. This shaft is so much better. Seriously, that that is mind blowing how much better this already feels just by changing the shaft. Definitely flattens. Can we break it? Oh, oh, that felt that 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 felt off. It was it was a good hit, but it felt different. There's something happening. Oh, that's interesting. Look, I don't know if you can see this, but right there, there's a dent building up. I struck that right there. Seems like this is one of the weak spots of the head. So let's keep going. This was a pretty good hit, actually. And look at the spin rate. It's 2,200. The shaft definitely did a lot to the trajectory as well and to the launch conditions. Spot. We are getting there. Ooh. See that? Oh, that's like bent. Jeez, up there. This, I, I feel like this is gonna pop up in a bit. Oh, that's crushing. Ah, three more of those and we're done. I feel like one, two, three. Let's see if I can crush it. Oh my lord, it's like, yeah, it's happening. Another 150 plus and we're done. Three, two, one, move it. Ah, 150. Oh, oh, we're there. Here we are. It popped open. It popped open. Let's see how crazy we can go. Two more balls and see how much that actually does to the driver. Oh, let's go. Oh, that sound. Did you hear the sound? Oh, hello, my lady. We're gonna crush you. Look at this beauty. Hello. Hello, here we are. Guten Morgen, Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen, my lovely lady. Do you want one more, my dear? There's also like a huge dent in the face, like the high, high toe spot. That's the one, look how it sounds like. That's like a cowbell or a can of Coke. Skills. I want to, I want to like shatter this completely, like completely devastated. Oh, did 
you see that? Oh, did you see that? <laughs> Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Let's give it, let's give it one last shot. Come on. It deserves the one last shot, right? You deserve the 150. <laughs> you can actually smell it burnt. I feel like you can actually see it spark at impact when I hit it because probably the like face and the body are like compressed or like hit against each other because it's compressing. That's why it's probably sparking. I don't know. <laughs> That's my explanation. What a beautiful sound. We're gonna destroy it like completely. Let's go. Efficiency, I swung at 149 and like the ball speed, and it was a good hit. I, I feel like that was a good hit. It feels like nothing in the meanwhile, but that was one point. 08.08 .08 smash factor. These numbers don't make sense, but well, this driver doesn't make sense either. So let's see if we can like entirely crush it. Oh, did you see the sparks? <laughs> I want to keep going until I actually hold the face in my hands. Oh, look at this. It's not even bouncing up. It's not bouncing up. See that? Compared to a regular driver, how crazy that's actually bouncing up. It's not like bouncing at all. I actually have to whack it to make it bounce. Ah, 150.5. Ball speed, 150.6. <laughs> let's see if we can actually create a negative smash factor. So let's see if we can swing faster than the ball speed. We're almost there. 150.5, 150.6. Nope. Let's actually check how far these balls are still going. So let's see how far we can hit with this. Ah, 233. I never went hunting, but this is probably how hunting feels like. Yes, come on, give me 150. Yes, there we go. And there's your efficiency of 0.93. 140 ball speed on this one, 140. And in the meanwhile, the breakage is real. I, I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. I don't. I want to do one more. I want to do one more. It almost looks like a sandwich because it's so like this is probably like 25 degrees off. Oh! It's actually des destroying the cover of the ball. Holy shit! It's actually cutting the cover open. So if you like this shit, seriously, I mean, I'm basically risking my life here. So you guys make sure to like the video and subscribe. Love it. Let's go, give me a 150 swing. I mean, look how it looks. Let me, give me the camera. Look at this. This is how I address the ball right now. Look how that looks. It doesn't look okay. <laughs> So what we do now is, oh, God. oh, that's hard, that's tough. That actually shows how much force is being created by the golf swing and the golf ball. Oh, God. Oh. That, seriously, that's a, a full workout I'm doing right here. That simply shows how much force you actually have to put into this to break it. It's like not moving. The heel area is so thick. I want to see the club face from the inside and I want to show you guys. It's not moving! So if this thing doesn't want to, we're forcing it to. It's titanium, right? Doesn't work. Driver one, Martin Sierra. Ah, that thing's not gonna win this. <laughs> if it has to be the flex, I turn on the flex, seriously. Humans always win. <laughs> there's your face. There's your club face from the inside. And there's even some like signature in there or something. Interesting, isn't it? This is how, how drivers were made 20 years ago. They usually put some glue in there because how the, how the club is actually made, it kind of collects the sparks so it doesn't rattle. That's, that's what it's for. And also it changes a lot of the weight distribution of the club as well. And it's still like fairly sticky after 20 years.
it's still sticky. So that was very different, a very different video. I'm playing around with different topics right now. I did a YouTube live as well, basically covering a raw practice session, just rolling the camera and go. And please guys, leave me a comment down below what you wanna see, what kind of YouTube videos you wanna see, and if you like the YouTube lives or if you don't watch them anyways, I'm gonna pin the most creative comment regarding a video idea. Do you want me to crush something else? Do you want me to do the trackman and quad comparison? Do you want me to do something completely different? Play golf course or something boring stuff like that? I mean, if you like that stuff, comment down below. I'm gonna pin the most creative one and see you guys in the next video.